So let's look at some uh, practical problems for basic, basic norms and condition numbers. I mean, some material from chapters 13 and 14, a couple of practice problems. So let's start with a norm question. If you graph all the 2D vectors of a unit circle with respect to Euclidean norm, they form a circle. Um, what's the form of the outline for the Manhattan norm or the L1 norm? So if you didn't have to look that up, good. Um, for Manhattan norm, they form a diamond uh, that comes because we're looking at all the things that add up to one uh, in absolute value. So the points like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5 are on the unit, quote, circle, uh, which is a diamond for the L1 metric. Um, the L1 metric is very useful for a number of problems, especially in high dimensional spaces, but there are even some small, lower dimensional problems for which it's useful. Okay, now let's go look at condition number. What's the condition number of the matrix A uh, given here? So think about how to compute it and then come up with an estimate of what is the condition number. Okay, hopefully you've solved that. Uh, you can go about just trying to compute the eigenvalues or the uh, eigen or the singular values. So we can take the ratio of either of those. Uh, so this matrix is not symmetric, so it's a little easier if we take the condition number from the uh, uh, A transpose A, which gives us uh, this diagonal matrix, or sorry, symmetric matrix. We can then look at the characteristic equation and we get the uh, characteristic equation, which has roots. We're not going to go through that. You just plug it into the quadratic formula. You get to 2.1 and 0.475, which tells us the condition of this matrix is around 4. So it's not too well conditioned. We'll generally get a decent solution when we try and solve this one. Uh, going to a slightly higher problem, higher dimension, let's look at the uh, both what are the eigenvalues and what are the condition numbers of this real symmetric matrix. Since it's diagonal, hopefully you quickly recognize that it has the eigenvalues of 10, 1, 0, and 2. It's just the things down the diagonal. Um, the A transpose A has the eigenvalues of 100, 1, uh, 0, 0, and 4. So the condition number is 9, uh, so should be 10 divided by that, which gives us around a million. So in this case, we've lost six decimal digits when we look at that one. Uh, if we use A directly, the, we can also get it just as the modulus of the eigenvalues, which is just 10 divided by 0.01, so then it's only 1,000. So it depends if we're going to use A transpose or A. Um, another condition number question, what's the condition number of rotation matrix? Well, this one's easy. The condition number of any rotation is 1. Condition, uh, the eigenvalues uh, are, are, are all imaginary, but the singular values uh, work out to always be the same in magnitude. Um, and so since this one doesn't change anything, A transpose A is the identity matrix. It's a rotation. A transpose is the opposite rotation. So we get the identity matrix. It has eigenvalues equal to 1. doesn't matter how many dimensions we're in. And the condition number is therefore 1. So rotations don't really distort things at all. We don't lose any digits. OK, let's do one last condition number problem. Um, if you're asked to solve a problem with a matrix A has a right-hand side and the right-hand side B are based on inputs. So you measured something stock values or uh, production values in your company or whatever, and that data is inherently limited to about five decimal digits. If the condition number of A is around 10 to the fifth, what can you say about the accuracy of your answer? If the problem requires least squares, what can you say about the accuracy of using the normal equation approach of A transpose A equals A transpose times B? Think about those, see if you can derive what the answer would be. So since the decimal digits are around what you expect to lose, the solution to ax equals b would have at best one decimal digit of accuracy. You might have none. Uh, it depends on really how close you are to the 10 to the fifth when you do that. Um, so we lose about as many digits of accuracy in decimals as we have power in our condition number. Uh, and the solution to the normal equations, because they involve a transpose a, would have the square of the condition number, so around 10 to the 10th, and it'd be pretty much just garbage. So you couldn't use the normal equations here. You could, however, because very often these problems will still have a very valid singular value decomposition, still use SVD to solve the least squares problem. So those are our problems in this. There's not a lot of extra practice problems in the book. Hopefully this has been enough to get you through understanding condition numbers.